Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I have five new holiday DIYs for you. Really excited, so let's get right into it. So here we go with DIY number one. For this, we're gonna be using these cute dish towels from the Dollar Tree. They are killing it with these. I just thought they were adorable. This is gonna be a really quick, easy project. As you can see, I am folding these in half, right side in, <laughs> so inside out. And um, I am just using my hot glue and I am gonna draw a bead right along the edge and make sure that that's nice and folded and secure. And then I'm gonna do the same along the bottom, but I'm gonna leave a gap in there as I do that because we are making pillows. So I'm gonna leave a gap so that we have a place where we can shove our little stuffing inside the pillow. So I rounded the corner, going all the way down the other end. And you can certainly sew this if you have a sewing machine. I still haven't taken the time to fix the tension on mine, so um, setting that aside to let it cool. Doing the same thing with the other one. Now I'm turning the first one right side out and making sure that I'm poking those little corners out. And like I said, you could certainly sew this, but I've been finding that the hot glue does such a good job on fabric. So I'm like, you know what, quick and dirty, let's go for it. So now I am taking my fiber fill and I am going to stuff my little pillow, making sure that I get it into each of the corners. And then when I've got it all completely full, I am going to tuck those little ends in for my seam and I'm just going to come right in with the hot glue again and seal that right up. I did find that it was a little bit harder and I'm sorry I'm out of frame here. It was harder to do it when I had the whole length of that to do so on the second pillow I got smart and I just did about an inch at a time with the hot glue because otherwise my fiber fill was kind of getting in the glue and it was just a little bit messy. So word to the wise just go an inch at a time when you're sealing up that little little last part of your pillow. And then I just did the same thing with the other one. And I've never really been big on gnomes, but I had created a little tree gnome a couple of videos back and then I saw these. I just think they're so cute and they seem to be everywhere. But anyway, if you have not visited with me before, my name is Corey and my channel is Crafted by Corey and I'm really happy that you're here. I have been doing this since about June and I'm really excited for everything that's been happening with the growth of my channel. I appreciate you all so much and so thank you. DIY number two. So this is my inspiration picture. This came from the Lakeside Collection Catalog and I thought it was super cute. So I'm gonna be using paint sticks and some tum depressor sticks, some Gorilla Wood Glue, my hot glue gun, and then you can see I've got a little truck over there, a little wooden truck that we'll be uh, working on in a little bit. So first I'm taking my paint sticks. This is a pack of 10 and I'm using all 10 lined them all up end to end and I'm using my tongue depressor sticks to seal them all together and I'm using my wood glue plus my hot glue just so that I have that immediate bond and plus the long-term bond. Now I am trimming down some other tongue depressor sticks and just because I am who I am and my perfectionism was showing I curved the edge that I cut also so that it looked like it was made that way yeah sorry <laughs> i just can't help myself sometimes but um and then i came in with some putty um wood putty or spackle from the dollar tree as well and i'm just doing it along that middle seam i don't mind the gaps in between each of the paint sticks going lengthwise because i kind of like that shiplap look if you will but i just wanted that center seam to be hidden so then I was prepping my little red truck and my sister found this for me over at Michael's and I, I can't remember if it was 99 cents or $1.99, but I needed a little red truck with the window that you could see through um, and I needed it pointed a certain direction. And so 
this was the way that I needed to go because every other little red truck I could find was pointing the wrong way. So I was so excited that my sister was able to find this. So thank you, Kim. And I'm coming in with my Arteza uh, acrylic paint markers. And the red paint that I had used was also Arteza, but it was just my regular red acrylic paint. <clears throat> excuse me, and um, just using my markers for some of the detail work. And I absolutely love the Arteza products, you guys. I know I talk about them a lot. I do have a coupon code for you down in my description box if that's of interest. Um, I do receive a commission if you guys make a purchase, but um, I really, I would not um, tell you about them if I really didn't enjoy using them. I just, I've really been, been liking their products and they've been really great to work with too. So I do recommend them. But uh, that was some more of the Arteza paint that I was using on the tree. And here is another one of those little markers that I'm coming in and doing some more of the detail work with. And just some additional detail with the silver acrylic paint marker. I created little hubcaps and I did the Gosh, what's that called? The wheel rim, I guess. I'm doing the wheel rims and I did the running board in a minute. You'll see that all in the silver. <clears throat> so then putting a little door handle on. And again, you guys know me, I have to do both sides because heaven forbid somebody should flip it over <laughs> and see that the other side is unfinished. So I'm doing both sides even though one side really is all that will be showing in the end. And now I'm coming in with my white paint marker um, and doing the little um, white walls because I, I want my little white wall tires. So just an extra little touch. So I had set my um, sign aside to dry with the, the spackling and then I came in and sanded that down as you saw and now I'm using my star bond super glue and I am taking two more paint sticks and creating a little ledge upon which my little red truck will be sitting later on so securing that down and you guys oh and now I'm coming in with plaster chalk paint um, I believe this is by Waverly. Now, if you have a long sign from the Dollar Tree or something else, you don't have to build the sign. Feel free to use one of their long signs that they have out right now. I just didn't happen to have one. Had I had one, I would have used it, right? But all I had on hand were the paint sticks, so that's what I used. And now I'm coming in with crystal chalk paint and it's just a really crisp pale blue and you can tell i wasn't real careful about where i ended with the plaster so i'm just kind of cleaning up my edge a little bit with my crystal chalk paint and now i'm coming in with fern this one i believe is by waverly this is also chalk paint i'm just using a flat bristled brush and I'm just coming in and dabbing it and just making little evergreen trees on the horizon. So I just wanted to have something pretty to see for my background. Now you can paint whatever design you want on here. It doesn't have to be a scene like this. The inspiration photo had a picture of Santa with his reindeer. I just felt like that was a little beyond my <laughs> abilities from a painting perspective. So I opted to do a landscape, but feel free to put whatever you want on here. This is yours, right? So back in with one of my Arteza paint markers and just writing Merry Christmas. Now, y'all, this is not my handwriting. This is hand lettering. Keep in mind that this is sped up by about three times. So I'm going really slow when I'm doing this. I am, think of it as drawing letters. I am not writing letters, I am drawing letters. So I'm taking my time and I am drawing them and making them pretty. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm going to widen my downstrokes. So it makes a little bit of a faux calligraphy. So if you think about it, any time you would draw down on your letter, that's the part of the letter that you want to make thicker. So that's what I'm doing here.
So then once I have it all the way I want it, I am going to bring my little red truck in with a pencil and I'm just going to start at the beginning and I'm lightly drawing in my numbers and I'm advancing the little truck just enough so that the last number that I've written is hidden and then <laughs> that way I just know how much to space them then I came in with my sharpie and went ahead and traced over the pencil and I decided it needed a little bit something more at the end of the journey so I'm adding in a, another little Christmas tree or evergreen tree um, but just giving it a little bit more dimension and making it a little bit bigger than all of the ones out on the horizon. And then I decided I wanted to come back in and make my numbers a little bit thicker. So I came back over them. And look at that. I'm so proud of this, you guys. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. So then I took some jute cord and those little slats in my paint sticks are quite handy. So I went ahead and used those to tie off my jute cord to create a hanger for this. And then I went ahead and um, I did go back in and trim that off. And I'm trying to show you how I scooch that along, but it's time for a shout out time out. Terrific, Tiffany. Look at how adorable these are. I love the joy jars and those little red trucks. They are something else. And lovely Linda, she created a wonderful tree as well as these candle holders. Just beautiful. Thank you for sharing both of you. I would love to give you a shout out as well. So if you have interest, please email me at craftedbycory at gmail.com and I would love to put you in a future video. So here we go with DIY number three. So this is my inspiration. I'm actually going to dupe this. This is also from the Lakeside Collection. I do have a free printable available to you in my Etsy shop, but I will tell you, you can get a set of three from Lakeside Collection for just $7.99. So I have the link for that in my description box as well. But if you choose to make it, this is what I've been using. And so this is the, the printable that I created and it's really identical almost to what was in the catalog. Um, I had Staples print this and laminate it. My version is 11 and a half inches wide and I'm just having that cut out. Staples did charge $13.99 for me to have it printed and laminated, which is why I really, I, I think it's fine if you wanna just order these. I just loved it so much, especially given everything that we are going through right now. If we can't necessarily get together with our friends and family over the holidays, how nice would it be to get some of these plates from the Lakeside Collection and fill them up with little goodies and drop them off to your friends, you know? was a ding dong dash you know leave them a little goodie on their doorstep and they'll read this message on the plate which is essentially um this plate has no journey no um, end to its journey you know you fill it up with goodies and you're supposed to share it with your family and friends and just pass it along so i just loved the message so um, I didn't really go into what I was using here, but this is the resin that I used a couple of weeks ago. And as I mentioned before, it has an A part and a B part. And I was always intimidated by resin, but this is so easy to use. You do want to make sure you wear gloves. Safety is important. This particular resin is food safe as long as you mix it properly. And it's um, one to one ratio. So however much of part A you use, you want to use the same amount of part B. So I am using my pizza pan from the Dollar Tree and I am putting a little bit of the resin down first. This is what they recommend you do to help avoid air bubbles in your project. And it actually worked out really well for me. So, and this also serves as an adhesive. So this resin is going to stick to whatever you put it on. So I'm using my little popsicle stick that came with the resin kit and I'm kind of smooshing it around and just making sure that I've got a relatively even layer of the resin on the bottom of my pan and I used three little cupfuls which I believe are about an ounce and a half of each type so I ended up with um, six little cupfuls if that helps um, 
and then I used about, I want to say a third of my mixture on the bottom. And now I'm putting the rest of it over the top. And they say that usually when you have trouble with resin, it's only because you didn't stir it enough. So with this, it's like you have to stir and stir and stir until it gets completely clear. And then you have to stir for some more. <laughs> I think I honestly think I stirred it for like 10 minutes total. So once it's all stirred, you can go ahead and start working with it. And I'm using my little popsicle stick again to just smooth out the resin and getting it all sealed along the edges with the resin that was underneath because I want to make sure that my image was encapsulated in the resin. And the reason I had this laminated, I just wasn't sure how the image would respond to the resin if I didn't, and I figured safe, better safe than sorry, so I just went ahead and, and had that um, laminated before I used it. And then you just let it cure for this particular one, 18 to 24 hours. And you spray it with a little bit of alcohol to clean up and also that gets rid of the air bubbles after 10 minutes i did spray it down with that so here we go with diy number four for this diy i'm using a little oval wood round from the dollar tree as well as some um, stencils that i cut out from my uh, silhouette cameo and i'm just trying to figure out make sure that they're gonna they're gonna fit on there that's why they're cut down as much as they are because i really wanted to make sure that i could fit them all onto this little um, wood oval so using my arteza transfer tape to get those transferred over making sure that they're on there nice and secure and I am not going to be painting these. And this is the first time I'm actually going to be using my scorch marker. It's the first time I'm using it with a stencil. And this particular scorch marker that I had picked up, and there is a link in my description box for this as well from Amazon. Um, but it has a dual end. So the one end is like a marker. And then the other end, it has this little foam tip. So I'm using it like a little stencil brush. So coming in and making sure that I'm filling in all of the little areas for my stencil. And then once that's done, I'll go ahead and I will peel up all of the vinyl. And then with the scorch marker, you just come in with your heat gun and the more heat you put on it, the darker it gets. Now, I don't recommend doing this on a self-healing mat. I noticed that it was starting to make my mat like warp so I picked that up I was like oh no I put one of my wood um, panels underneath and that seemed to do the trick and then I was able to just keep coming in and you want to keep your heat source moving but you can see how now all of a sudden it's going really nice and dark and it just makes it look like the wood has been burned and it, that is non-toxic so it's safe for anybody to use now I'm coming in with my home decor red chalk paint and I always forget what the imperial that's what it's called and uh, I'm just doing a dry brush technique because I wanted to bring a little bit of Christmas to it um, so I thought oh let's do some red I went a little bit crazy with the red because I think it's right about here well no yep right there <laughs> I was like oh that was a little too much <laughs> so um, I just kind of went with it I did uh, come back in in a second and try to sand it of course I hadn't waited long enough before I tried to sand it and so it just kind of started smudging the paint <laughs> more than anything else but um, yeah here I go yeah and then I'm like ugh, don't do that Corey so <laughs> I came back in with some plaster and I did the same thing just a dry brush technique I just felt like it might knock down the red a little bit so I do still have that red in there but it's just not as red <laughs> so now I'm coming in with my jute cord I'm starting at the top and I'm using my hot glue to just attach this all around the perimeter of the wood oval. And the reason I was starting at the top was that I knew I was going to be adding, first of all, a hanger, but then also some detail that I figured would go ahead and uh, camouflage that. So here I am, I'm just making a loop with my jute cord again. I'm gonna trim that off 
and then I'll attach that to the back with more hot glue. And I always like to have things nice and secure, so coming in with a lot more hot glue just to make sure that that little sucker is not going anywhere. So now I'm coming in with my Dollar Tree picks and you know me, I love cutting down my picks and pulling them apart. So I'm just cutting off little pieces that are going to give me just what I need for this particular little project. I don't need anywhere near as much as what's there. So sometimes these picks can go a long way especially if you're doing a lot of little projects. So coming in with my hot glue and making sure I am attaching that where I want it. I'm also trying to be careful not to come down too low because I don't want to cover up the words on my sign. I just want it to be something pretty at the top to accent what I've done. So these are my berries also from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just trying to get in between some of those berries without destroying them and cutting off a little bit of a piece for what I need. And then I knew I wanted some greenery. So I was trying to use those leaves that came with it. It just wasn't working. So instead, this is one of those garland ties also from the Dollar Tree. I think it comes in a pack of 10 or 12. And I'm just cutting that down and using that as my little uh, greenery for my project and then I'll go ahead and attach the berries with some hot glue and I decided I wanted a little bit more than that so I got myself some more of those little berries and they're all wedged in there nice and tight together so that was <laughs> that was an adventure but I finally made it work and got that in there and got it all glued down and there you have it, rustic little joy, peace, rejoice sign. And here we go with DIY number five. So for this, I'm using one of the Arteza wood panels. These are 10 by 10 panels and about an inch and a half deep. And I'm using my red chalk paint again. I also had shown you decals that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And now I'm using my gold Arteza acrylic paint and I loved this gold color so much at first I thought I was just going to keep it along the sides but I loved it so much I wanted to bring it up onto the the front surface so I just really lightly and it's not a solid line just kind of stippled it along each of the edges there so now I'm using my transfer tape again to come in with the uh, be joyful always that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and you probably could just peel it off and apply it I was just having issues so I figured I would use my transfer tape <laughs> it just made it easier for me and now I'm coming in over it with some Mod Podge and I, my thought here was let it be sealed in and then I also figured it might hide the fact that these are basically stickers that I stuck on the front of here. So there we are. Let me know what you think. So here we go with the final reveal.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's projects. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up because it really does support my channel. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving next week, and I will look forward to talking to you soon. Until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.